Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, what we're going to look at today is something a lot of people have requested. A lot of people have requested a lot of different things, but um, specifically this one today, I try, I try and go off whatever has been requested the most from what I can tell from reading comments. Um, and this is about moving between rooms. So you've got all your rooms over here, you've got your million different levels or whatever, you know, how do I, how do I start to go between these rooms and how can I come from like a start menu into those levels. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. Uh, before that, I just want to say a quick thing about um, like uh, emails and questions I've been getting lately. Um, a lot of people <laughs> um, have been sending me a lot of emails, which is really cool. Uh, I've been getting a lot of comments and stuff asking questions and things, and that's cool to see people so eager to learn and everything. But uh, the volume, the sheer mass of uh, <laughs> emails and questions I've been getting has uh, started to reach the point where sadly I'm not able to answer every single one of them the way I was able to when I very first started doing these videos. Um, I pretty much answered every single question that got asked, and um, I, I would write these really huge in-depth responses um, to people's questions and things, but um, I can't really get around to doing that anymore, especially like, uh, so I, every time I get an email from someone about GameMaker, I tend to mark it like, okay, I'll, I'll come back to that later, and then so I get so many more that like, some of them do get lost, so I am sorry if I haven't replied to your email, your question, but um, I do read all of them, I read all my comments, I read all my emails, um, but um, yeah, sometimes I will miss a few. Um, so I'm just going to give you some pro tips though now on how you can get your question answered if you do have a question that you want to send me. Um, first of all, try and keep your email short. I do get some ridiculously epically long emails from people oh, like giving me like background of how they got into game maker and stuff and it's cool and it's interesting and I will read it and stuff like that but like you know do get your question passed if you've got some questions that you, you want me to answer and you know second of all um, try and make your questions specific a lot of people have been coming to me with questions that is just like how do I even start to answer this when they'll say something like how do you make an RPG in Game Maker? Or how do you make, um, like, an FPS? Can you make 3D games in Game Maker? And, you know, all these things that are really super general. Or, like, they're talking about, oh, could you walk me through how to make, like, um, an RTS in Game Maker? And it's like, well, no. That would be, like, eight tutorial videos worth. I can't cover that in just, like, an email or, like, a, a YouTube message. So if you want to, if you want me to answer a question via, like, an email or comment, Try and ask something specific, so ask, like, if you're, maybe you're working on a, like, um, someone recently was working on, like, a turn-based strategy game and wanted to know, um, just how to start, you know, selecting a unit and then moving that unit somewhere else. So I was like, okay, I can walk you through the logic for that. First of all, you need to say when you click on the unit, um, enter into some sort of state and that tells your game that you're in movement mode. And, you know, I could walk through, you know, sort of the simple steps, you know, the quick logic of how you would put it together. And then hopefully um, they already know enough about the program from watching my videos to sort of say, ah, oh, okay, right, okay, and then be able to go from there. What I can't do is, you know, basically put entire videos worth of content into emails. So just, you know, just bear that in mind when you are sending me your questions and things. Like I said, I'll keep, do keep sending them, you know, I do, I do, you know, I read them all and I'll try and respond to absolutely as many as I can. It's, you know, it's good for you to reach out if you are having problems with this sort of stuff. But yeah, just some, you know, a couple of pro tips there if you want to get your, uh, your questions answered. Keep the email short and succinct and, you know, to the point and ask specific questions. Um, yeah, I do get so many emails asking pe from people telling me they're working on these crazy huge RPG projects off the back, and I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> uh, you you, you want to start much simpler than that. But anyway, that's, uh, that's a total tangent from today's tutorial. Um, so yeah, first of all, we're just going to look at um, the very basics of moving. Uh, moving between rooms, moving between levels. So um, we're just going to say, like, you know, if you're on your menu screen, um, there will be some text here. And uh, if you press enter, how do I make that just go to the next room? You know, that that seems to be something. You know, it's really really simple, but it is something a lot of people seem to be struggling with. So I'll cover that in the most basic sense first of all. Um, and then after I've covered that, I'll be talking about like how to move sort of between levels and go back and forth and. Um, maintain like the player position if you are making something like an RPG and you know you've no idea how to even start moving your character between rooms but keeping them where they 
left off sort of thing if you know what I mean so yeah I'll be covering that second of all but first of all we're just you know changing room and, and that's really easy so what we're going to do is like I've got this object here called uh, object underscore start uh, in room underscore menu over here and uh, all this does is it's got a draw event where um, it draws some text on the screen all that's very important really it just it draws the text um, press enter to continue or press enter to start or something like that and uh, all I need to do in order to make it so that when I press enter I change room is create an event release enter so you know add event key release uh, enter you know uh, same as we've always done or you know in, in code or whatever in your step event you could be checking if the keyboard key vk underscore enter is pressed if you're working with code that way um, and then one line of code room underscore go to room underscore start so start being the first level of my little game really is as straightforward as that room underscore go to and then the name of your room goes in there there are a bunch of other commands as well like uh, room go to next which will um, take you to the next room in sequence along here but um, if it goes off off the edge so like if I was on room underscore end if I was on my, my last room and I tried to do room go to next the game would just crash because it would just be like there is no room next or whatever or it'd throw an error in any case so yeah we're just going to use room go to there a um, bunch of other things you can do that are just really simple I'll just walk through as well you can do uh, things like that game restart which will restart your whole room uh, whole game even or uh, you can do room restart so it'll just set everything in your room back to its initial um, initial settings and respawn all your non-persistent instances which is all of them if you haven't set them to be persistent I'll cover what persistent is in a bit, but um, yes, yeah, so that's all you need. Room underscore go to, room, room whatever. But maybe if you know, um, since this is only one line of code, and you know you might not remember what this is doing here, you know, it might be easier for you instead of this. You just go to the main one tab over here in your actions, and just find uh, this little square with the arrow pointing down in it. Different room, and that is literally the same thing. Go to room undefined. Pick the room, so room start, no, not room menu, room start, okay, and then that's exactly the same, and you can see it straight from there, so that might be easier for you to work with. So now, as we can see, if I run the game, compile, compile, there we go, so in our super fan Zelda Black Sephiroth Pokemon Aquamarine RPG version 0.0002 beta, if we press enter to start, boom, we are spawned in our soon to be massive and glorious RPG world full of all of our hopes and dreams for what the greatest video game ever made will be. Of course. Anyway, so this is our little man at the moment, now we've moved to this level and um, I've just set him up so he can spawn these flags around the place which will just be important for uh, <laughs> demonstrating a point later. But now I've got another room set up so how can I make it so that when I walk say off the edge of this screen I'm taken to that room but my player is uh, put like in the position he should be according to where he came into that room from. So if I come down here, you can see this is the room we were just in, and I've got these little objects called warp triggers that I've, you know, I've already set it up basically, I'm just going to explain entirely how I did it. But uh, I've got this room, and I've got uh, room underscore end, and I've basically got this set up as like an, an infinite corridor in a sense. If you walk out of this side, you'll come in over here, You'll walk, if you walk out then over that side, you'll come back in over here. So it just you know, loops around in a big circle. Or in a line, or you know, however you want to visualize that. Right. So what I've done here is I've created a single... Um, I mean, you could create a million of these different objects. I mean, like, if you were uh, like thinking about this in your head and you, know, you weren't used to do, sort of doing things eff um, effectively or efficiently, you might be thinking, like, oh, maybe I could make an object so that whenever I touch it, um, it warps me to that specific place in that specific room and I can create a million of these um, for every single um, different instance of a door or whatever in my game but you only really need one you only really need one object and you can set it up using uh, a thing called creation code to send you to to set it up with specific coordinates where it needs to send you despite it being an instance of one object so I have one object called uh, obj underscore warp now all that does is it executes a very very short piece of code whenever it collides with object hero 
which is our player. It just uh, it sets his coordinates to be this variable tag x and um, target y. So object hero dot x. So we're modifying the x of our hero set to target x, which is a variable that we haven't declared yet, but we'll come to that in a second. And the same for y. And then we just use the same line of code we used earlier, which is room underscore go to target underscore r, which again is a variable we've not set. So at the moment, um, if we were to just place one of these objects in our room and walk into it, uh, the game would crash because like it would try and find what this variable is and it doesn't exist. But you'll notice I don't have a create event here because um, what I've done is I've used something called creation code. If you right click on an object in Game Maker and go to creation code, um, every single instance can have its own code that it runs when it's created. So you can use this to set up individual properties for uh, an instance of a single particular object. So what I've done inside here is, um, as you can see, I've set all those variables that um, we hadn't set before in the collision event, which is target x is like 576, target y is 240, and uh, target r equals room end. So in room end over here, those coordinates come out somewhere around here. Uh, I positioned it so I wouldn't land on this warp trigger, because uh, otherwise um, it would just you know, create an infinite loop where it's warping us back and forth. <laughs> So, you know, I've set all my coordinates as sort of poppers just in front of the warp trigger. Um, you, you mean you could write in a system sort of, you know, uh, to make sure, you know, if it's the start of the room, don't trigger the warps or, you know, and so on and so forth until you've walked out of it. But that's, you know, I'm just trying to explain the basics of this. So it's a very simple system. Um, so where, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. Where was I? Right, so you walk into this and then you get teleported to here. And as you can see, I've got, you can see when I hover over it, when you hover over an object to the creation code, it shows you that creation code in a little um, uh, tooltip. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so yeah, you can see target x equals 40, y is 240, room starts of that one. When you walk into that one, it will pop you out somewhere around here. And then basically I can go around placing as many of these as I like as long as you know, I go into the creation code and I set up those variables which I can just copy and paste from these and then alter as I need to create any number of these warp triggers and because you know, this is one of the things I like most about Game Maker Studio actually even if it is a little bit buggy in how it works but this new feature where you can actually like uh, change like the size and shape of uh, your objects in the room so if I want to cover the entire width of this room for example I could just stretch those out to be much much bigger than they were stretch it a bit more. There we go. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it right on the edge there. Uh, that one should be fine. So yeah, if now, like, if I run the game... Oh, actually, sorry, one more thing I need to cover. Uh, in Object Hero, I have this little box here called Persistent Checked. Uh, what that means is when I change room, uh, normally when you change room, all the instances and objects in your room get deleted and get replaced basically with the new objects in your new room. Uh, if an object has persistent checked, um, it's not destroyed when you change room. You have to like manually destroy or destroy it through code or something like that. Um, so when I change room and I move over here, um, setting those coordinates only carries me over because... Um, because my object is persistent. So I basically I hit this and technically in order what happens, my coordinates are set to somewhere over here and then the room changes. So yeah, uh, all, all instantly like sort of thing. So don't worry about, you know, what if I set the coordinate to be on top of the warp target that's in your room sort of thing, you know, that, that won't come into it. So it'll, it'll move me to be like over here and then it'll change me to this room and because it hasn't deleted my player, it'll just spawn me there in this room. So that's how that works, and you, you'll see that working now, I hope. Uh, <laughs> if I press enter and I walk off this side, yeah, there we go, and now I'm in this room. If I walk back over here, back in this room, the same thing will happen. When I go all the way to here, I'm just going to plant some flags to here. If I plant some flags, I'll walk back into here, and you see those flags are still there. Now... Um, that's a shame actually I've got that set up. I was hoping I'd set that off persistent. Let me turn that off. 
um, because this is what yeah I've got it set up already. Um, basically, you can also set your rooms to be persistent. The example I was going to give is because I didn't think I'd already had this set up uh, because it's not by default. Is um, when you leave a room and um, you come into a new room. For example, those like I left some flags there, and then I came back into this room. Like now, I turned it off persistent. You'll actually be able to see the difference. Is um, basically when I'm leaving these flags and I walk out of the edge of the room, if I now come back, now the persistence is turned off, you can see the flags have gone, because it's just reset the room back to all of its standard settings, apart from the player, who is persistent, and um, so he's you know he's not being respawned or anything like that. He's here until we manually get rid of him, whereas those flags are not persistent. But we don't. if we set those flags to be persistent, and we came over into here, all those flags would appear over here, and that's definitely not what we want. We just want to remember what we've done in the room before. You know, if you were making an RPG or something like that, you'd want to remember if you'd pushed blocks or, you know, talked to NPCs or stuff like that, you'd want to remember the settings that your room had currently gotten to, so that when you come back to it, it's all the same and it doesn't just reset. So you do that, pretty much you might have guessed because I just turned it off, is um, in, this, in your room settings, if you just hit persistent, and if I do it back over here as well, you can see, or oh, you saw before, really, but you can see that when you place stuff in the room, or you do anything, or you change anything in the objects of your room, your room goes straight back into how it was set when you left it. So, come out, I'll place these flags in here, back, all my flags are still there, and so on. And pretty much that is the basics. Now, hopefully you can see how you would um, start to piece sort of a persistent world together and be able to move between those worlds and things like that. I expect now I'm going to get a flood of emails saying, oh, how do you do save games and stuff? <laughs> so I can save this, because that's probably the next step people are, would be thinking about when you were doing this. Um, but yeah, that's basically more or less how you do that. So yeah, uh, that's that tutorial, and I'll catch you guys next week. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and all those other things you do when you like things on YouTube. You, you know, yeah, this is cool. I want to see more of this stuff. You can subscribe, subscribe, and all that stuff. Because that helps me out. And the more I get helped out, the more I can help you guys out.